Hi, this is Richard, and we're doing another um, intermediate tutorial for Blender. This time we're going to be talking about add-ons. So I wanted to start off by showing you this tree. Look at this tree all covered in leaves. How well modeled it is. It looks like a real tree if we apply a few different things to it, um, like some colors, maybe some textures. It's going to look really, really, really good, and it's going to render really well. Well, how did we do this? Um, that looks like it took a lot of time, and it would take a lot of time if it wasn't for some awesome add-ons. So, what are add-ons? They are basically things that users have created, or people directly involved with um, the development of Blender have created to add functionality on to Blender. How can we get them? How can we use them? Well, there's a lot already in Blender. So did you see where I went? I went to File, User Preferences, and then we've got all these different add-ons right here. Let me scroll this down. And it looks pretty overwhelming because you get this big long list of all of the add-ons that are available. But that's all of them. So if you start looking at this a little bit closer, 3D view, 3D navigation, navigate the camera in 3D view from the tool shelf. You can click this button here for documentation. It'll open up a website where it shows you how to use it, instructions for using it, how it works, and some of the known issues. And that's really handy as well. And then you can just click here to enable it and make sure you save your user settings before you exit out of here. So some of them that I have turned on, I have screencast keys turns on, turned on, which allows you to see what I'm pressing during these tutorials. Add curve extra objects, which allows me to do spirals and things like that. Ivy gen, which is going to generate ivy climbing up a wall. Add curve sapling, that's what I used to create this tree that you saw at the beginning. I just check mark this box and then I save user settings and let's drop this down. Look, this warning, that little symbol there, length parameters may cause errors. So I might get some errors with it or I might not. Most of these that are included with Blender, they're generally pretty stable. You can use them without much worry. And make sure you save before you use an add-on, after you use it, and you should be good to go. Simplify curves, bolt factory gives you some simple meshes to add in of just bolts and nuts. Extra objects are some more simple geometries that you can add in. Add mesh pipe joints. It joins two cylinders in a variety of angles so that you don't have to do it yourself with the Boolean, and then maybe you lined them up wrong and you have to retopologize, and it's a big pain in the neck. Regular solids. It's just some more um, basic geometries that you can start from or add in by just hitting Shift A. So I have all those enabled. Here's another tree generator that I downloaded externally. Not the greatest. I like the uh, add curve sapling better. And then animation add-ons, import export add-ons. Here's one for 3DS, which I don't use, so I don't need. Um, Autodesk FBX format, that's actually what I use with Unreal Engine to export my items into Unreal. So I have that one turned on. Here's a motion capture one that I don't necessarily need. So I can just turn it off like that. And then we have GIMP. I use GIMP instead of Photoshop. So you can import GIMP files here. You don't have to actually save them to images. You can just save the file in GIMP and import it into Blender. That's really handy. And let's see, it has an error here. It requires XCF tools installed. So you'll have to go in and tool install that. And then we have import images as planes, which is really handy. It keeps the dimensions of the image you import. And if you import a PNG with an alpha channel, all that means is an image that has a transparent background. You can enable transparency, and then it'll be transparent. So if you just wanted to put a bunch of pictures of trees in the background, you could easily do that with import images as planes. You just line them all up in the background, and it'll look realistic and save you a bunch of time. Lightwave ob objects, import make human. So what is make human? I thought it'd be worth it to go and show this to you. Make human is a program where you can tweak the properties of a human, kind of like the character generator at the beginning of some RPG games where you just change what the face looks like, change the weight, change the age, the height, things like that. You can get pretty specific with it to make all different types of realistic looking humans. It's not really great for creating cartoony humans, but for realistic ones, it does really well and it gives you great topology. And then you can send that to Blender where you can work on it more and start to sculpt it or create clothes for it. It's a really great tool and it's just been released out of Alpha uh, just a few weeks ago. To get it, you go to makehuman.org and I'll put that in the description as well for you. So back to Blender and our add-ons. Then you have all these things and you'll just enable them as you need them, as you want to do things. And there's even things that aren't on this list that other users have created using the Python uh, language for scripting. They've created 
additional functionality and you can go out and you can get it and you can install it and it's really easy to do. I'll show you that in just a minute. So at, these are all the import exports, Sketchfab, that's a 3D um, website to show off your models. You can upload it there really easy. I didn't pull that one open to begin with. I don't know why. Let's uh, go to it real quick. Whoops, I forgot my control enter. Oh well. Sketchfab it is pretty great. I like it a lot. You'll just get this 3D model then you can click left mouse click to rotate it, right mouse click to pan it, and then mouse wheel scrolls in and out. And you can embed this like a YouTube video on any website to show off your work. And it's really easy to upload to, really easy to sign up for and create an account. And just sketchfab.com. I'll put that in the description as well. And then with this add-on, you just have a key and you just hit the upload to Sketchfab. It's really easy. You do need to spend a little bit of time um, making your materials in the right way so that you can put them on your model in Sketchfab. And that's a little bit of a pain, I will say. But other than that, it's pretty neat and there's an add-on for it. Then import export UV layout as an image so that you can work on it in GIMP. That's really handy. We'll go over that when we do the UV layout video. And then just little things that add functionality to make your life a little bit easier. If you've been looking for a way to do something, odds are, because it's such a large community around Blender, somebody else wants to do that as well, and somebody else has made an add-on for you, so you can probably find an add-on to use. Add chain. Add a chain with a curve guide for easy creation, so that you can easily add a chain into your scene without having to build it and spend all that time building it. And then painting, texture paint layer manager, paint palettes, cycles render engine, <laughs> make sure you have that turned on. You know that's an add-on in here, you can turn it off if you want. Renderfarm.fi. This will send your work to this website, renderfarm.fi, where it'll send your work to a bunch of different computers to render it in their online render farm. It's a free service and it's pretty great. There's also Sheepit, which is a free render farm for Blender. So you can divide up an animation or a really large image between a whole bunch of different computers. They'll all work on it a little bit, send back the results. It's all put together into one final piece and then you get the result of that and they'll just email you when it's finished. You can sign up for either of those and use them as needed. You just gotta be a little bit careful with what you send to them and just be aware that it is a free service. So there are some things that go along with that and you'll wanna look at those websites before you use them. And so these are add-ons and this is where you add them. Remember we just went to file, user preferences, and then you click on add-ons at the top. Now, if you want something outside of what's included in Blender, well, you go to the internet for that. And I pulled up a few different sources here. Here's just the Blender add-ons catalog. Under the green, these are things that are included in Blender. And then there's some things over here that aren't that they uh, recommend, like Oscar Art Tools. Uh, Oscar Art has a lot of really cool stuff, like making coiled ropes and things like that. Um, and then you can click on these, and they'll take you to a website where you can get it and install it, and it tells you how to use it where to find it once you install it, things like that. And there's cur curve tools, simple curves. And these red ones are external. It's red because, you know, use it at your own risk. It's not, uh, it's going to take you away from this website. You know, it's not something that you uh, can fully trust because it doesn't come through Blender itself. But I don't think anybody's going to try and hurt you through an add-on. I think um, you're just fine trying a few of these out. They might just not work as great as you're wanting them to. So there's all these different add-ons for all these different things that you might want to do. And of course I'll put this into the description as well so you can just click on the link and come here and look at all of these. And this, is, this site is maintained by Blender themselves. This is the Blender Wiki. So you know that you can trust this and it's generally going to be up to date. It might be a few months behind. But then you can go like this is a uh, blogger dot com blog that has a whole bunch of different add-ons as well with little gifs showing you how they work and you can select different categories of add-ons over here like music motion capture how to group gimp there's generators body rigs bones camera compositing 
all these different add-ons to just change the workflow and make things easier for you. There's no reason to do things the hard way when if it's something that you do over and over again, there's probably an add-on for it to make it a lot easier. Don't go too crazy with add-ons because you might forget some that you got, but if there's one functionality that you want right now, maybe get the add-on for it and use it and learn it and know how to work it into your workflow. And then when there's something else, go get that one. Just doing one at a time and working with it and using it and learning it. That way you don't have a bunch of weird buttons everywhere that you've never used before. Just slowly grow your add-ons. But it's really, it's an important part of Blender and how to use it effectively to do all the things that you are wanting to do quickly and simply to get the results that you want because they could just provide it and let you deform the meshes and drag the little vertices around, but there are better ways. You can make it more powerful. You can make it exactly what you want. And then here's a big file, a download of all of these different add-ons. You can download them all right here in this nine megabyte package and then install them. So let's just go here and let's get one. Where is Adder Curve? Where's the Oscar art? Rope. I'm just going to control F this real quick. I know I saw it when I was looking at this before. Chain Rope Maker. Let's grab that one. Here's the download. Oh, uh, it's a subdomain of Blender. I'm going to say OK. Hmm. Well, let's grab that Rope Maker. Python. Oh, it's just a plain file. So we'll just search Oscar Art Rope Maker. And Blender Artists, they're a good place as well. A lot of these professionals that make these add ons, they'll put them on Blender Artists. So if you see something coming from blenderartists.org, that's a good place to get it. We'll click that direct download and see you see it installed down here. I'm not going to unzip it. I'm not going to do anything to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Blender. And we're going to go back to File, User Preferences, and Install from File. It's so easy. We're just going to go to my downloads. And I have OscarArtRopeMaker.zip. I'm going to click on it. And now I have Object OscarArtRopeMaker. I'll just enable that. Create ropes. Okay, I can click on doc documentation there and it'll show me how to use it. I'll save the user settings and close out. Now, shift A, we go to curve, we have Oscar Art Rope. And it adds this big rope in here. We do this drop down, we have some options. We can increase the number of strands in our rope. One, two, three. Looks like a nice rope, the diameter of them. How long would this take you to do a coiled rope like this if you didn't have this add-on? There you go. I just added a new curve in here. Let's just scale it up. And then this adds three different strands. So I'm just going to control J join those. Now we can the curve modifier to this rope and then let's go to our Bezier curve. Bezier, never known how to pronounce that. And we can change that rope however we need it. That was so easy and simple thanks to that add-on. Really great add-on for making ropes.
and then whenever you're ready you can just click on that and apply it. And now we have a bent coiled rope that we can place in different scenes. We can go into physics and we can apply soft body to this and make it uh, fall like a jump rope or however you want. There's a great jump rope tutorial out there um, that you can find using pretty much what I just did. Or you can Alt C and change it to a mesh and now it's all polygons. So you can edit the individual polygons. That would have taken forever without that add-on. To do this, I would have had to make three different curves and coil them myself. It would have been a, a big mess. I wouldn't want to do it. With add-ons, it was super simple. Now watch, let's add another tree here. Let's get out of edit mode and grab this tree and move it away. So now let's I don't know what that was. Move our cursor back to the center and we're just going to add a tree. See here under curve you have these plugs. These are the add-ons that I've added. Add tree. And we get this preset. We're going to go down here to a preset. Let's do Quaking Aspen. Whoops. Okay, it doesn't want to do that one. We'll do a black tuplo again. Or how about I'm sorry, that was, this one's a black oak. This one's a black tuplo. And then we can just click the bevel to add some bevel to these curves so that it fills out. And then we can change the random seed to change the shape. There we go. Let's change up here to branch splitting. Do three levels so that we have a lot of little twigs for the leaves to catch on to. Base splits, you can see what that does. It adds two trunks. And then let's go to leaves and let's show the leaves. Six on each uh, curve that splits off. Seven, eight. You can see how fast that adds a bunch of leaves to it. Nine, ten. Sure, there's a nice fall tree. How quick and how easy was that? That was so quick and so easy. These leaves, the tree is all curves. The leaves are meshes that you can then apply a transparent um, leaf texture to it and it'll look even more realistic. You can change this tree into polygons if you want to, to do um, unwrapping or things like that. Or you can just apply materials to, to render the curves. Just go to those leaves real quick, add some dark green to it. Let's render that out real quick. Just to finish this all up, this is the power of add-ons. So we showed you how to download and install add-ons, a few different places to get some, um, where to go to apply them, how to turn them on, and a little bit of how to use them and how you might find things. And just really quickly and really simply, we just applied the couple of basic, basic materials to this tree and already it looks good enough to put into a video game. I mean, just look at that tree, it looks, I mean, that would have taken you hours and with a simple add-on, it took 30 seconds. So that's why I wanted to do this video to show you the true power of add-ons and what you can achieve when you start looking around and starting uh, installing some of these to help you in specific ways for specific things that you want to do over and over again. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.